telemedicine applications in the EMS realm. Emergency medical service providers are the primary responders to medical and trauma emergencies in out-of-hospital settings. EMS workers have that critical job of quickly bringing the patient together with the appropriate type and level of care. That occurs either at the scene, in the ambulance or other transport vehicle, or upon arrival at the hospital. EMS communication systems use telemedicine to send and receive real-time information for medical direction for optimal patient outcomes. There exist multiple opportunities at this time to use enhanced telemedicine to provide improved information and decision making in EMS settings. This technology is provided with the use of a 4G connectivity via a hotspot or an in-motion satellite of cellular connectivity that's combined with any device with a camera that would allow streaming video and also a high-level encryption application. These systems involve a variety of networks, devices, and communication methods, most commonly called video conferencing. The on-scene EMS provider will use that cellular telemedicine equipment to transmit images and audio using those networks, either internet, wireless, satellite, and the device can be either a cell phone, use an, an Android application, or an iPhone, or an iPad, and then different communication methods. And that communication is sent to a receiving advanced level provider, which could be a trauma surgeon, a neurologist in the case of suspected stroke, a cardiologist in the case of a suspected cardiac event. That high level encryption that is HIPAA compliant is provided with secure server use. How does this relate to modeling and simulation? Clinical direction for high risk low volume procedures can be provided. Those same procedures have been practiced by those paramedic providers on simulated patients and that procedure can be redemonstrated by the advanced level provider to that paramedic if needed in real time prior to them performing that task. Patient transport direction is provided based on that video and audio assessment that they have seen and with communication that they have had with the EMS staff at the scene. How does it relate to modeling and simulation? The developmental and ongoing assessments of that efficacy of the telemedicine program utilizes that modeling and simulation to produce results, to recreate results. And challenges in implementation can be simulated prior to the expenditure of funding. And this is critical when you're looking for funding sources from CFOs, from nonprofit organizations, from grant applications, etc. That transmission of real time video, including pictures and graphics from a mobile environment, really creates a virtual emergency department at the scene of the accident, at the scene of the crime, in the case of a disaster situation. This is an ongoing assessment that can be transmitted en route to the hospital. So how is it used today? That clinical direction for those high risk, low volume procedures is provided and patients meeting stroke, cardiac and trauma criteria can then be transmitted for a higher level assessment at the receiving facility by that advanced level provider and intervention can be directed by that advanced level provider to the paramedic transporting that patient so that in route they will receive a higher level intervention. It's important because real-time video from that scene of a traffic accident, from the scene of a trauma, can be made to that emergency department personnel and they then can prepare for anticipatorily the needs of that patient. Actually witnessing that mechanism of injury depiction is real critical to plan what that patient's going to need for their maximum patient outcome. The telemedicine access 
is really one of the most essential needs to link the greater than 15,000 EMS systems and almost 1 million EMS personnel throughout the United States with the life-saving capabilities that we've described. This is especially important because 25% of our population in the United States is actually rural and 75% of the geography in this country is rural. So that means that virtually the entire population at some point or another is traveling on highway systems that transverse rural areas. And the use of telemedicine across the board in the EMS world can bring technology closer to the point of care and bring that expert closer to the patient. So in those rural settings, you are actually getting the same standard of care that you would get in an urban setting. And that's what the American public has come to depend on and to expect. In the future, there are a lot of excellent communication systems that have been developed and are in ongoing development. And they in involve individual public health and medical institutions across the country and have support from the Centers of Disease Control and other federal agencies. So that support for telemedicine, as well as state, local, and private source support is critical in this development in the future of telemedicine throughout the United States. EMS personnel and the paramedics especially will be transmitting video and audio to tertiary facilities like the level one trauma, stroke, and cardiac centers where physicians are going to assume higher level medical control and direct transport throughout the country with the use of the telemedicine expansion. Community paramedic programs are also being initiated that would incorporate telemedicine for non-acute situations. Definitive care will be readied while that patient is en route and that will provide a seamless patient arrival and processing at the designated specialty facility where that specialty provider will be awaiting their arrival. Patient outcomes will continue to be improved and an example of this is that pre-hospital 12 lead EKG transmissions have been shown to improve times to reperfusion therapy and that decreases patient morbidity and mortality. The telemedicine technologies break down the walls that often limit healthcare. They bring that expert in into a hospital setting and connect doctors to the patient that creates that virtual emergency department in urban, suburban, and rural areas. They will continue to extend modern healthcare through the use of EMS and community paramedics to the very rural areas and one of the concerns is the reimbursement for consultations for the interactive video conferencing. And that has been recognized as an important issue at national, state, and local levels. In addition to the acute care advantages that telemedicine offers in the EMS realm, telemedicine can provide an efficient and potentially cost-effective care alternative to people suffering from debilitating conditions who would have required transportation to emergency departments and frequent readmissions to acute care facilities. Telemedicine in the EMS realm is moving forward at a rapid pace. This will improve patient outcomes and improve standardization of care throughout the United States. Telemedicine technology, especially in the EMS realm, will improve out-of-hospital patient outcomes and standardized care in the EMS community throughout the United States.